All right, here we go. Question number 14 from our pre-calculus homework number one in my lab math. We've got three parts. It says determine whether the graph below, actually it's over here, is that of a function using the vertical line test. So looking at this particular function, we can see that every vertical line that I could possibly draw will intersect the curve only one time and that means that it is a function. Next part, it says if the graph is that of a function, what are the domain and range of the function? Select the correct answer choice below and fill in any answer boxes with your choice. So this was a function so we know that there is going to be a domain and a range. The domain are the values that x can be. And they do want interval notation. Notice that this graph starts at negative pi on the x-axis and it is continuous all the way over to pi. And that's going to require brackets from the keyboard negative pi, we do have a pi symbol here in the toolbar, to pi. And do you understand the brackets are required because those are actual points on the graph so that pi is included in the domain. Now the range of the values that y can be, notice that the lowest value that this graph can be is negative 1. That is also going to be a bracket because it does actually touch down at negative 1. And the highest value that this graph ever gets to be is positive 1. So we're going to input a 1 with a bracket, again because it touches up at 1. And that's going to do it for domain and range. And then it says, what are the intercepts? Select the correct choice below. Type an ordered pair. Type an exact answer using pi as needed. Let's input the intercepts. So the x-intercepts as an ordered pair, right? It says type an ordered pair, would be negative pi comma zero. comma. Got to separate the intercepts with a comma. Look, the graph touches at the origin. 0, comma, 0. And the other x-intercept that I see is over here at pi. So that's going to be pi, comma, 0. And I would like to point out that 0, 0, the origin, that is both an x-intercept and the y-intercept. So I should not need to repeat that. That should by itself count for both the x and the y-intercept. Then it says determine if the graph is symmetrical. Now we have some choices here. Is it symmetrical with respect to the y-axis? Well, the y-axis would be fold symmetry, meaning that this curve going up would have to fold over and be repeated over here, which it's not. So this does not have y-axis symmetry. X-axis symmetry would indicate, again, this piece would have to fold across the x-axis and be repeated down here, which it's not. So this does not have x-axis symmetry. Origin symmetry is rotational symmetry. So if we take this piece of the graph and rotate it about the origin 180 degrees, it would lay on top of this piece of the graph. So this graph does have origin symmetry because the piece in the first quadrant will rotate 180 degrees and is replicated in the third quadrant. And I believe that is the only symmetry that this graph has is origin symmetry. And that's going to do it for this particular problem. 
So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those in the comment section below, or you can text me. And thanks for watching.